Michelle and I love using dynamic search ad campaigns to either find new keyword ideas or expand reach. Now, what we don't like to do is to blanket target every single page on the website. That is where page feeds can be helpful. Page feeds allow you to handpick whatever URLs you would like and then categorize them to make it easier to lump them together in your ad groups. So in this video, we will show you what a page feed is and where you can download Google's page feed template. We'll show you what options there are, how to attach it to an ad group, and then we'll give you some ideas that you may want to consider to use page feeds for either targeting or exclusions. I'm starting off the video in Google's page feed data template because really I'd like to have this feed ready to go and uploaded to Google before I start creating a dynamic search ad campaign. But really the template is just these two columns. Column A will be your list of page URLs. Column B will be optional custom labels. Row one, which I should probably highlight here. Well, highlight as best as I can. Leave these labels in here. If you don't, any list upload will be rejected. Okay, now let's talk about some of the rules between these columns. For the page URL, list one URL per row. No commas, semicolons, whatever. One URL per row or even per cell. Also, leave off any tracking parameters. All of those should still be set up at the account, campaign, ad group level, ad level, whatever you currently have set up. Just list the plain URL. We see slash one, slash two. So yes, deeper pages within the site are allowed. For custom labels, these can help group your URLs into specific categories. So you'll see later when we're setting up a DSA ad group within Google Ads, if I just wanted to pull all the URLs that say shoes, I can choose the label shoes from the feed and only target those URLs. This makes it a lot easier if you want to keep everything within one document and then pull by labels. And it also saves you a lot of time so you don't have to create a separate feed for every different categorization that you might want to use. As we see in a few of these, like the first URL, there are multiple labels. This is allowed. You can add multiple labels per row. Just make sure that the labels are separated by a semicolon. Also for any spaces, use an underscore in between words within the same label. And if you're wondering, you can add up to 20 labels per URL. And I've never run into this situation, but if you need to add more than 20 labels, I'd really look at how you can restructure your categorization. I say that because Google doesn't want any URL duplication. So if you need more than 20, you really shouldn't duplicate the same URL and add the rest of your custom labels. You should also avoid any redirect URLs. If you have a URL that redirects, put in the actual final URL. And then Google also states that any URLs that aren't crawlable by the ads bot, you have it blocked out, within your sitemaps, your robots.txt file, whatever, do not include those in the feed as well. You have them blocked out for a reason. So for this video, in a separate tab, I'm gonna upload this option. Our website is pretty basic, pretty much just have videos on there. So for all of our blog pages, I might have a custom label for the category of what the content is. So we see YouTube, LinkedIn, Google Ads, they're all videos. So this gives me options in different DSA ad groups to target just YouTube videos, just LinkedIn videos just Google Ads videos. Or if I wanna have an ad group that's broader, doesn't matter what channel, just any page that talks about our videos. Gives me some flexibility here, pretty much depending on volume or how much control I want. And then another thing I'll show you and we'll talk about later, exclusions. Adding pages on here that you never want to show up for your DSA campaigns. Add them to a feed, group them all together with a custom label to make exclusions a lot easier. Okay, now let's hop into Google Ads and we'll show you how to upload this and also how to attach it to a dynamic search ad ad group. Once you're in Google Ads, we have to go to the business data section. To find that, go to tools, and at least in my view, it's all the way on the bottom. Here we have a selection for data feeds. If you click on the blue plus button, we want to add a page feed. You'll have to name the feed, and yes, I have already done it, just so I didn't have to wait for any approval. Makes this video recording a lot easier. If it was brand new, this is what you would have to do. Then you would select your source. I'm gonna upload the CSV file directly from the template because I only had, what, five, six different URLs. What I normally do for clients is just create a Google Sheet. And speaking of the file, there is where you can download the page feed template right here, but I'll also have it in the video description. What I typically do for clients is a Google Sheet. You would just click on it, make sure that it's shared with this specific email address, and then really I just search my Google Drive for the specific page feed that I want. It makes it a lot easier in case you have to edit the feed in any way. I could just go straight to the Google Sheet, add any URLs, remove any URLs, edit custom labels, and that's fairly simple to do. And then if you wanna directly integrate or upload, is your HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, 
and SFTP. These four options are for you accounts out there that are absolutely massive, thousands to tens of thousands of pages. But I'll stick with my file upload, select the file, there it is, and I'll apply. And here's my page feed here. If I click in it, there's the options from the basic template. Since I didn't change any of the formatting, I knew it was good. But like I said, in some older ones, here's what we have with the Pay Media Pros options that we showed earlier in the second tab of the template. Now that your page feed is uploaded to Google, let's look at how we can start attaching it to our ad groups for targeting. And I already have another tab open. Okay, here is a DSA campaign that's already been created. Sometimes you need to go through and just create a regular search ads campaign first and then update the settings later on. We've run into that a few times with certain accounts. Sometimes it just makes it easier because they kind of bury the dynamic search ad settings. So within the search campaign, I'm clicking the gear icon for the campaign settings. And at the very bottom, we see dynamic search ads setting. If I click on this, scroll down, and here we have the options to tell Google which URLs to use for this campaign. The default option will be to use all URLs within this website. That's very broad. Never would be our recommendation on where to start for dynamic search ads, unless you're including a targeting audience with it to make it more of a remarketing DSA campaign. If I'm still trying to reach newer users, this is where I'm gonna start with a page feed. You can select multiple page feeds, but in this example, I'm gonna include the one with all the Pay Media Pros URLs. So now, for this campaign, I'm telling Google, only use URLs within this feed. Now I'm gonna save this, and my campaign settings are updated. If we click out of this, I'm gonna select an ad group within the campaign, pretty much just the one, go within my ad group, and I actually wanna show you something. So I'm gonna click on the blue plus button to create a new ad group, and here's a part that can throw a lot of people off. I'll admit, it took me forever to remember this, because this is the setting that's really buried or just flat out not visible when you're creating a brand new campaign from scratch, hence why I said just launch a search campaign, come back to your ad groups and change this after the campaign is launched. When you're setting up a new ad group, Here's where Google lets you change it from standard to dynamic. Yes, we want to change it. I don't know why they make this such a pain in the butt, but it's the way it is. So let's say I wanted to create an ad group with anything that had videos in one of the custom labels. Here, I can use custom labels from the feed. The feed is already chosen at the campaign level. And there we have the custom label. So now within this ad group, I will only target those URLs. In my feed, it was just three, it's just an example and only those URLs will be used when Google's targeting my page content for dynamic search ads. Now you still have the option to look at specific web pages, but this still falls under the feed I told Google to use in the campaign settings. If I start adding in URLs that aren't actually on my feed, it won't work. If you select all web pages, it's gonna be all web pages within the one feed I chose at the campaign level not every single page of your website. So I'd save and continue, and then I'd have to go through all of my ad setup, but I really don't want to. So I'm gonna leave. Next, I'm gonna go down to audiences, keywords, and content. And then here, I'm gonna look at dynamic ad targets. Here we see this is for both ad groups, and this is showing me what we're targeting in each DSA ad group. After I'm done setting up my ad group, I'm gonna to come to the section, but I'm gonna click over here to negative dynamic ad targets. I can click on the blue plus button, select it at the campaign or ad group level. You can add in exact URLs, which is what this did from an older video, or what I talked about earlier, creating a custom label for any exclusions within your feed. So that was the custom label I had. I'm gonna add it. Remember, I did it at the campaign level, so it'll cover both of the ad groups for this example campaign that I will never ever launch. And then this covers me. Again, you can always update your Google Sheets and continue to add any exclusions that you want. But that's really how easy it is to use a page feed for dynamic search ads. But to wrap things up, I just wanna talk about some ideas of how you may wanna structure your ad groups, which then leads to how you may wanna structure your page feeds to give you different ideas of what to test for targeting. Now these aren't gonna be all the options since every website and account are different. Clearly I can't talk about all the recommendations I would have in terms of what you may wanna target for DSA and what you may wanna set up for your page feeds. But here are some pretty common ones that we've broken out for clients. One we've broken out for clients who are focused on awareness. We've taken all the URLs from their blogs, articles, white papers, infographics, whatever, and we separated them out by either their own feed or just by different labels. That'll always be a question. Should I do a separate feed? Should I do a custom label? And to me, it really depends on volume. 
Now on the flip side, if you're really focused more on trying to get conversions, deeper intent, action, we'll create a separate feed or labels for all of our PPC landing pages. Almost all of our clients are lead gen focused, so they all have good forms on their pages. We'll separate those out because the content a lot of our clients have in terms of blogs, it's more knowledge sharing, trust building, understanding that the user isn't ready to convert right away. So just the different intent levels between the two options that I have on the screen right now, we split out in between either two different ad groups or depending on how you want to control your budget, potentially different campaigns. And another big factor of what we want to test for targeting would be looking at the site navigation. For a lot of our clients, they'll have a separate page on the site for products. How can we group these products together? I want all similar products and all their pages within the same label so we can potentially test that out within a different ad group. I'd want services to have a different label so it doesn't mix up with products. Maybe I want to focus on certain industries instead of products. You or your client has categorized their website specifically for a reason. Use those different page categorizations as different URL groupings for your page feeds. Again, totally up to you if you want to use a separate page feed or just different custom labels. But these are the main ways I would start. Now in terms of the actual structure, do you need to create a different ad group for every single one? No, because you can go back to that dynamic ad target section within Google Ads and see how each of them performs separately, very similar to an audience's report. If you don't have a lot of budget, group some of them together. But as you see differences in performance and you want to push one area over the other, budgets are controlled at the campaign level. So you may have to shift some things around if you don't have a ton of budget. Now as for exclusions, a variety of options. Your privacy policy and terms and condition pages. Is that really the first page you want a user to land on? No. So if you're creating a separate feed just for exclusions, because maybe you are targeting every single page on your website, look at excluding those sorts of pages. Any thank you or confirmation pages after the user has converted on your website or your landing pages, exclude those. If it's crawlable and you still have robust content on your thank you pages, it's still possible that someone can land there first. And if they're landing there first, that means it's counting as a conversion even though the user hasn't done anything. Always exclude those out from your campaigns. Any crawlable sitemaps, we want to exclude those out. Potentially recruitment pages. If you don't want to reach people who are looking for a job, add that to your exclusions with a, maybe a different custom label. I understand there's accounts out there who create campaigns to try to recruit users. Well, there you go. That's another targeting option for you. I know I said higher level content like blogs, articles as a targeting option that also can be used as an exclusion option. We have clients who do want to target almost every page of the site, but they don't want users to go to the blog pages first. Fine. We'll just create a page feed for those or any irrelevant ones and exclude those out. The page feeds make it a lot easier to target a bunch of pages at a time or exclude a bunch of pages at a time instead of having to go and add one by one or URL must include and find all the different options that you want to test. Anything that we could do to save time is always going to be beneficial. And we also understand that when you try to set up dynamic search ad campaigns that Google wants you to make it a performance max campaign instead, I'm always going to leave this separate as a standalone search campaign because for us it just flat out performs better. But in case you were wondering, yes, there are page feeds for performance max campaigns. Michelle made a video about them. We could watch it here. If you have any other questions on page feeds within Google Ads, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.